No more of the talking heads. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, warriors, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Okay. <laughs> this is a project we're going to be working on. It's another waterfall dresser. The difference in this one is that it's actually in really good shape. There's a few things and scratches and stuff like that. A few little structural things we need to take care of. But hopefully in this video, what we're going to show you is that you don't always have to um, strip a piece completely down in order to restore it. We're going to try to just restore this without necessarily stripping everything down. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to attack some of the structural work on this cabinet first before we start doing refinishing and stuff. So I wanted to show you guys with these drawers. Um, one common problem with these drawers, you can see how this drawer is tilted back. It's almost at the front here, but it's tilted way back here. This is common with older furniture because they have wood rails. So let me show you the rail and show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna adjust it so you can see this one is not leaning back. And we'll show you how we did that. Okay, so we took a paint stick and we cut off this end where the little indentations are. We cut it off, so it's like this. Then I took that section and we cut it in half so that we had two pieces like this. Okay, once we get these two pieces, I take my sandpaper and I feather down the end of each one of these pieces. Now, if you look right in here on the rail, we've glued this in here. You can see right here it's feathered down, so it creates kind of a ramp. And what that's doing is this is really badly worn, where the drawer has been riding on this for 70 years. <laughs> so, and the drawer itself is worn in the back. So, uh, the side of the drawer is actually kind of like this. So when we're pushing it and it's tilting to ride on the rails, that's what's causing it to be uneven up here. So by putting this in here, it's A, leveling this rail out, and B, it's taking up the gap from the edge of the drawer where the drawer is crooked. Now that's in there and it's taking up that gap, causing it to ride straight. So we take these little pieces, we glue them in here, we feather this down. Then on the back of the drawer, if I can find the right one here, just so that we don't get caught. I'll make sure you can see this right here. You can see I put a little bit of an angle on there right here. We did that so that as it rides across the rail, it won't catch on this wood. It'll just slide up on that wood. So now when we put our drawer in, you notice that it rides straight. And we have a straight line here. Now the stops are a little bit off, it should be out here. But you notice how much straighter this is. It's almost, almost there, it's really close. So that'll straighten out all our drawers. So we're gonna take the rest of our sticks, which I've already got made. We're gonna sand them all down, put our little beveled edges on them, put them in all the drawer glides. And then we'll put in all the drawers, make sure they all fit and slide right. And with a little bit of wax on there, they're going to be good for another 70 years with this wood added on. 
and we'll have all the drawers straight. Once that's done, then we can move ahead to uh, doing some refinishing work. Okay, so we just put the drawers in to test fit them. You can see now they're very level with the edge. So we're looking good. So time to move on to some finishing. Okay, so we just uh, had Amazon pull up and we haven't ordered anything recently, so you think maybe somebody sent us something? Let's see what we got. Would you believe it's a VHS tape? VHS tape. That's tape going back here, is it yours? Ooh, it's a four-piece wood chisel set. This is from Cara and Chris over at Lemons to Lemonade. Cara and Chris, thank, thank you. you so much. If you guys haven't checked out their channel, um, it'd be a great time to do it. They do some awesome work over there. We watch them all the time. Um, they're another couple that does a lot of work on furniture. They have some great stuff that they do. We appreciate them. Yes. Car and Chris, you, thank you so much. These are really going to come in handy. They got all these different little chisels in here. Nice. Look at this. Ooh, nice. These are going to be great. These are going to come in so handy with the work we're doing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It's awesome. Car and Chris, thank you. Those are going to be awesome. Oh my goodness. Speaking of chisel sets. Oh my gosh. We are going to be set for a while. This is awesome. This is a 10 piece wood chisel set. This was on our Amazon wish list also. This was sent by Ashley and Christy. It says, uh, my mom and I love watching your videos. You and Jim do such good job on your items and are always entertaining. Love and good wishes from Alabama. Aww. So Ashley and Christy from Alabama, Thank we appreciate you. that. You're going to see us using these really quick. Got everything. Yes. It's got carpenter's pencils in here. It's got the sharpening stone so you can sharpen your chisels. This is a little guide that gives you the right angle for sharpening which is really handy because you always want the right angle on these when you when you do that. And it's nice. got everything all the way down to this little tiny one 
these little tiny ones really come in handy sometimes they have the little small ones to deal with so this is going to be absolutely awesome so Ashley and Christy we appreciate that yes thank you okay so we're ready to start doing some finishing work I'll show you a close-up of this top we got some scratches and some watermarks in it um, while we're thinking about it, um, I know we just talked about our Amazon wish list. Um, we also have um, the Buy Me a Coffee. And Cindy and I were talking because, you know, married couples do that sometimes. And <laughs> we, we decided that we were going to set a goal. Um, we've told you guys before that we were looking at setting that money aside to buy some tools we need. There is a, uh, well, let me start here. Every week when we decide on a piece to finish, um, I have to run up and get products. Our supplier for a lot of our products that sells um, the Mohawk products is about 45 minutes away. So it's like a two hour ordeal for me yeah, to go up and- Plus time in the store. Plus time in the store, plus uh, gas money, which you know how gas prices are now, um, to go up and come back and to pick up one or two products that we need to use like on a specific piece. And then the next week we pick a piece and I try to determine the colors, run up to the store and do it all over again. So they have a, uh, a kit, it's like a refinishing kit, that has all kinds of tools and stains and uh, hard fill sticks. It just, there's, I think, 100 items in this kit um, that it comes with that would allow us to actually um, mix and blend and mix custom colors to match things. Um, it has equipment in there to do fills, um, all kinds of different color putty sticks. The, it just, the list just goes on and on for this kit. Anyway, so Cindy and I would like to get this kit so that we don't have to keep running up to the store every week um, and spend that two hours doing that. And um, it'll just be a lot easier for us to be able to do things and keep pumping out videos to show you guys. And then as we use products, we can just order online directly and re replenish those products before we even anyway, run out. That so kit is about $1,500. So what we have done is we've thrown $100 into an account that we've set aside toward that kit. And we've decided that 10% of everything, all the furniture that we sell, we're going to take 10% and throw that in the account. And we thought we'd get you guys involved. If you wish to help support our channel, not required, but if you would like to help support us with the Buy Me A Coffee, um, we have a link down in the description. Everything that comes in from the Buy Me A Coffee, we're going to put into that same separate account. And when we have $1,500, we're going to go ahead and buy that finishing kit so that we can keep yeah. things rolling a little faster, a little easier. Um, and we will let you know each week as we go. Uh, where we're at with that and where things are progressing and how far along we are. So our goal is $1,500 for the finishing kit. This week we're starting with $100. So we'll update you next week and see where we're at. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll show you what we got on the top here and what we're going to do. So this is the top of the unit. You can see we got some scratches here. Um, these are relatively minor. You really can't even feel them. In fact, my nail barely touches them. Um, but we do have some watermarks over here. Um, this is what happens when you don't use a coaster. And use a coaster. <laughs> some scuffs and stuff. Anyway, for this, because we do not have all the touch-up things that we need to, like, touch this up and blend these in, I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to sand the top. And then I think we're going to restain the top. But the rest of the unit is really in good shape. The rest of it I think we can just touch up.
So we're gonna wipe this down with a little bit of mineral spirits just to get all the dust. Dust. You want that off it? It'll also give us a little better idea if we have any really bad spots that we might have missed. Okay, so we're wiping this all down with the Sedona um, stain from General Finishes. And one of the things we're doing is we're scuffing this up a little bit with the 320 sandpaper. So we're not even going through the original top coat. And what this does is it gives you very minute scratches on the surface. You can't, I mean, you can't even feel them. But what that's doing is it's allowing some roughness so when we do the Sedona, it's kind of blending. It's filling in all those very minute scratches we're putting in here, but the original finish is still sewing through, so it becomes kind of a blend. And we just wipe the Sedona on very lightly because we're really not trying to stain the unit per se. We're just trying to blend our Sedona color into the finish that's already here. When Cindy washed these, so it actually just had like a gold paint on them that we think was original, but it was very old and they didn't have like the chemical processes they have now. So it just all, it started flaking off in places. So we just went ahead and stripped all the paint off them and now we're just going to repaint them gold. We're going to spray the pre-catalyzed uh, lacquer from Mohawk on the unit. So you want to make sure you're wearing a good respirator. Um, we're going to open the garage door. We got a fan going, so we can just blow it all out of here. And then once we do that, we'll shut the garage door to get it warmed up back in, warmed back up in here, because it's I don't know, 35 degrees outside. So, okay, here we go.
Okay, so we're almost there. We're just putting on the last of the hardware. We're gonna show you some before and after pictures. Might help if I put this in the right spot. And just bear in mind that this particular one was not like a full restoration where you would strip the whole thing down and refinish the entire piece. What we really did was more of a refresh. So the piece looks good. It looks, the finish looks like it was very well taken care of over the years. And it does have a few, um, let's call them character marks that are still there, but they're, they're not like through the finish where you see nicks and gouges and stuff. But if you look close, you'll see some of those. So, but the idea was to make this look a kind of the age it is yet at the same time have it look really nice and well taken care of so we'll go ahead and show you some of the pictures of what we started with and then we'll show you the final reveal And as always, have a flippin' awesome day.